With liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. For, all. for all. At this time, we'll now move on to motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas. Do we have anybody? public invited to be heard. We'll take a, a couple minute break here to allow people to call in. The screen will be put up with the number, I believe. We being have two guests when you six, are six, ready. Nine. Uh, the Chamber supports City Council submitting to voters this fall an amendment to the Home Rule Charter to allow for the lease of city property up to 30 years. Uh, the Chamber is interested in furthering conversations on this and is happy to help with communication on this important tool for future city projects. Thank you. Calling in to voice my support for Longmont Public Media, of which I'm a member, I don't personally view myself as creative in the way that people who are into making podcasts and videos are, but I am interested in lots of community-focused things like local politics and community organizations. What I love about Longmont Public Media is that it takes the mission of public access seriously. Next up, we have special reports and presentations. Uh, so I think I'll throw this over to Harold. This is what's happening on a daily basis uh, in terms of the number of cases. Again, this is by state. Uh, that really, we're moving through cumulative numbers. Um, and at this point, we're really watching what's happening on a day-by-day -day basis. This is, again, the movement that we've seen in the number of deaths related to COVID-19. Um, again, an important slide, I'm gonna show you this in Boulder County, when again, you look at um, where the, the number of cases are in, in terms of the state. And you can see that it's in the 20 to 29 year old group where it's um, um, over 8,000 cases. Um, and then you're starting to see uh, that they've had 11 deaths, 368 hospitalized in terms of this age demographic. And then if you remember what this looked like the other day, uh, there's been, looks like um, some growth in this category as well, from a 10 to 19. This is the um, PCR percentage on a weekly basis, and you can see that when they look at it from a, on a weekly basis, it's, it's somewhere around 4%. Um, this is the five-day rolling average on the percentage of COVID-19 PCR tests with positive results. So you can see that, um, you know, we've theoretically, we've stayed below that 4% as Boulder County. We saw that peak where we got close, and then we moved, and then you see a rise. Uh, when you looked at the state numbers, um, it was sort of this general trend that moved like this. In case of Boulder County, you see a, a high peak in the age groups of 20 to 29, drops in 30 to 39, goes up, and then you can see the move back. And so we look different in, in Boulder County in terms of where those cases are coming from. And you're really seeing the growth in this area uh, based on what that charts look like as a system. You can see that we're still tending to move in, in the green. When you look at the state numbers, it's very similar to that. Um, kind of wanted to touch on a couple of points. So many of the questions that you all talked about came up. We closed uh, the west side of the Civic Center today based on the very issue that you talked about in terms of testing. So the finance side in that area, um, we had to make the decision to close it and go through our protocols. Not the first time we've had to do it, won't be the last time we've had to do it, um, um, but we just went through and followed our processes in terms of how we needed to approach it. Um, and I was actually gonna bring it up to answer many of the questions you asked, so thanks for, for doing that. Is So when we look at Safer at Home and we look at Protect Our Neighbor, you know, the governor has delayed um, uh, the consideration of any request to move into the protect our neighbor phase, which uh, for a couple of weeks, which we know that's now gonna put us into the month of August. We know the case growth numbers that we have to look at and all of the parameters. Um, and, and so we know the month of August is probably highly unlikely uh, based on what we're seeing that we'll move in to protect our, our neighbor, which means we're still in safer at home. And, and so at this point, at least as I've talked about it with my staff, uh, we really think we probably would be best in August um, to stay um, in this Zoom environment based on everything that we're seeing and what we're doing. So that would be um, 
my recommendation. I just wanted to get council's feedback on that or answer any questions I could on it. Councilmember Peck. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I agree that we should stay virtual and I have to hand it to Susan and your staff that I think we've got a pretty good handle on how to work this now. And uh, I think it would be the wrong message if we're at a safe at home, stay at home through the governor, but we don't do that. So um, I'm all for doing the virtual until the governor lifts that protocol. So after much ado, I would like to introduce Scott Converse from Longmont Public Media. Scott, go ahead. Hi guys, can you hear me okay? All right. Um, General Manager, Longmont Public Media. Um, and what we're going to do tonight is a six month update on where we're at with Longmont Public Media and where we're headed. So, so these are some numbers. <clears throat> we um, started from zero. Uh, as you know, the longmontchannel.org was the old uh, contract holders website that they'd run for 20 years. Um, and they would not forward that to us or give us any access to it whatsoever. Uh, by what we can tell, it's effectively shut down which was a shame because people knew it was there. So we started from zero uh, with longmontpublicmedia.org. We broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week on channel 8, 880, as well as on our website, as well as on YouTube, uh, and as well as on t uh, what's called T-Vision, T-Mobile's uh, Comcast competitor. So we actually send it out to four channels 24 seven currently. Uh, we do, as we've talked about, do separate live streams, um, like to YouTube and to Facebook, uh, things like the summer concert series, a bunch of other stuff in, in the works. So challenges and risks. Um, as you know, COVID-19 has kind of stopped everything in its tracks. Uh, maker spaces um, are, uh, and co-working spaces have pretty much had their business model ripped out from under them. People don't want to congregate in spaces. So uh, i give you an example. Tinker Mill had 800 members uh, at one point, it's down to about 600 now. That not, that's not all COVID related, but a big chunk of it was COVID related. That has since leveled out and is starting to climb back up again, but it really was a hit. And uh, we never had that luxury of having a large user base uh, in place already. We started at zero and we had just started to take off when COVID hit and that just, it just knocked us dead. We have less community content than we planned on because we don't have a makerspace. The makerspace, the plan was to have the makerspace and all those people with all their great ideas and all of their energy and enthusiasm uh, to create these shows isn't there. So we haven't been able to make as many long, specific Longmont focused shows as we would like to. Uh, we will again, but right now it's really hard to do without the makerspace, without the members and the community in the space. It's I mean, it's just an amazing amount of variety that you have done and added to this city and i i'm very grateful to you because this is this modernization is exactly what we needed and much as i'm fond of the cable guys and i am I, they're nice guys but uh we really needed to take a fresh look at everything uh sandy i was just wondering this would be stuff that would generally come up when the contract is up for renewal is that correct Actually, Mayor Pro Tem, I believe that Scott is asking for that advisory board member anytime, not necessarily as part of the contract. And we are not planning to bring you back that decision about the contract tonight. Tonight was really a presentation from Scott. I did send you all survey results from our public engagement that Council Member Peck asked for when we did sign the contract. And so our intention is to bring it back in a month or so. Um, but if you had some specific direction you'd like for us to pursue tonight, that would be that would be great to hear. Otherwise, we'll work with Longmont Public Media and bring you back a contract later in the year. Item 6B, sales and use tax simplification code changes. All right, Mayor Pro Tem, I'm Jim Golden. I'm the city's chief financial officer. And uh, I'll be making this presentation tonight, but I'm also gonna have a couple of staff members who will also be here to help assist or answer questions. Richard Eastis is our sales tax administrator and Jamie Roth is the assistant city attorney for the city. And they've been working hands-on on this project. So, so a few years ago, the state decided to put together 
a, a task force to address the sales tax simplification to move the state of Colorado towards a position to make it easier for businesses to do business with, uh, with cities in Colorado. So this task force uh, did work and put together some uh, standardized definitions and Longmont was involved in that. And we did implement those standardized definitions about three years ago. So uh, part of what we're bringing forward uh, in a couple of weeks are um, amendments to the code that will address our uh, licensing requirements. So we currently are, um, we, we require uh, any business doing, any uh, business doing business in the city of Longmont to have the retail uh, sales tax license. So we have contractors who have been required to uh, file, um, file an application for a license with us and they do most of their business they're building contractors and so when the only sales tax collections or uh, payments that they make they are making when they are pulling building permits so they're really not remitting any sales tax to, to us in our sales tax system they're also licensed elsewhere under the code as contractors <coughs> excuse me so what we're proposing to do is to exempt them from the the business license requirement because part of the, uh, the cost for our new software system is driven based on the number of licenses we have. The impact from this, that will probably uh, generate more sales tax. And certainly from a staff efficiency perspective, we believe once we get this new system in place, it's gonna help us with our processing of returns, certainly gonna help the, the, the tax filers as well and they'll be able to easily make electronic payments and file their returns online. And so I believe that we'll be now moving on to item 6C, the discussion to resubmit the ballot item concerning 30-year leases as a charter amendment for the November 3rd, 2020 ballot. Uh, essentially what we did is we just took the item uh, that we presented to you all during last year um, when you put this forward um, so you could start the discussion and advise staff uh, in terms of what you would like us to do with this item in the future. But, um, you know, I, I will support it if I think it needs to be on the ballot. People need to vote for it one way or the other. Um, I don't think it's wise for us to put it on the next ballot, but you know, if that's what everybody else thinks, then I will support that. Uh, we're gonna have a recovery to manage and we're gonna need partners in that recovery. And like other cities who um, engage in public-private partnerships, which really weren't a thing in the 1960s, um, as far as I can tell, um, uh, we're going to need those thir those 30 year leases and uh i think that we are able we are we need to be able to communicate to the public um that this is important to the recovery this is important to the quality of life in longmont uh in enriching uh, the city and and attracting people who are willing to invest in the city we also our private investors need a 30-year mortgage too. They need a 30-year lease to get it done. Councilmember Waters. Thanks, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think among the council there's there would be disagreement about the value of changing the charter because we agreed to put it on the ballot before for the very reasons that Councilmember Borden just described. And I want to I, I I think Councilmember Christensen's concerns I share about how how soon you would go back to the ballot and not having it appear as though we're going to keep coming back, you know, over and over again. I, I do remember that Nextlight failed first time and came back successfully subsequently and was one of the great decisions that, the, that this community made to support um, the creation of our own uh, uh, bandwidth uh, uh, and, as a utility. So yeah, I think even with minimal organization behind it it's a no-brainer to to help the community understand the value it doesn't cost anybody anything it positions long month to compete at least equally 
with municipality, municipalities around us that have already done this to attract investment to Longmont. So I hope that we would, as a council, uh, give our community a chance to support it, get behind it, and um, and give us a chance to put us in the same kind of competitive position that we see other uh, Boulder County municipalities. Councilmember Peck. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I, I also agree. We we already voted unanimously to put this on the ballot before, so I don't think there's going to be any real discussion about um, should we or should we not put it on the ballot. Okay, just a. Uh... From my perspective, I guess, uh, I do share the same concerns as far as uh, putting something back on the ballot so quickly after it lost. Uh, real quick question, I don't know if anybody has the numbers, but what was the spread on the votes for when it lost? 16,000 votes against versus 13,000 votes for. Uh, so it was really pretty close, only a margin of 3,000 votes with no messaging whatsoever. Thanks, Council Member Martin. That's 45.47% for and 54.53% against. Is that the direction from Council to then bring that back to you all, place it on the ballot? Yep. Yep, I definitely see the head nods. So. All right, Council Member Peck. I feel like I've talked a lot tonight, but thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And um, so I didn't know at what point in the agenda to bring this up because there really wasn't any. I asked Don to Don Quintana to forward to you a an email that I got with a petition from 350.org Colorado, and basically. It is from uh, about 50, uh, 30 individuals and 20 some organizations um, that would like to, us to sign on. This, these organizations, these 30 organizations are not coming to elected officials and city council and commissioners to see if we will sign on a petition to ban fracking in Boulder County. And the reason I think this has come up is because uh, Erie, is being overrun with uh, with all kinds of gas and oil sites that are just outrageously large. Um, and if you don't want to do it as a council, I will do it individually. Um, so that's what I would like to know. This is this has to be done by Thursday, which is why I'm bringing it up very late. Here, uh, uh, according to the council rules of procedure, uh, the city should not be taking a uh, final position or official action at study sessions, I would recommend that you suspend the rules of procedure. Um, and if it's uh, representing the city, I, I do think a motion and vote would be needed. Okay. I move to suspend the rules of procedure so as to be able to make a motion on this. I'll second that. Second. Okay, thank you. We have a, a motion on the floor by Council Member Peck to suspend the rules of procedure and a second by, I think, Council Member Hidalgo Ferry. I heard a couple of them. The, the, the people and the organizations uh, about which uh, Council Member Peck is referring, you know, to cooperating with one another, not one of them uh, approached us to ask, how did we feel about being sued to enforce what the court had already told us we couldn't enforce? and to spend more tax dollars. I mean, I, I don't want to get too wrapped up in it, but I, I still honestly have a little bit of an edge on about being sued by our friends uh, to cover the cost for other people who would like to see fracking bans imposed in Boulder County. Um, so that doesn't feel like in the spirit of, of cooperating with one another, that's the way it should be approached, but that's the way it was approached. And now on short notice, the question is, would you sign a petition to do exactly what people didn't do for us? So um, I have an issue with that, but I'm more, I'm more concerned about the legal status as defendants in a lawsuit in which we've chosen to take a neutral position. Gene? Um, so I guess seeing no other discussion on the motion on the table, all those in favor of suspending rules of procedure to allow for a motion and vote during a study session, say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. 
The motion passes five to one with Council Member Waters dissenting and Mayor Bagley absent. Council Member Beck. Okay, I move that as a uh, as a council we sign on to the 350.org Colorado petition to ban fracking in Boulder County. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Peck to sign on to the petition uh, as referenced to ban fracking in Boulder County or be in support of banning fracking in Boulder County in a second by Council Member Christensen. Council Member Martin. Uh, I have a, a number of concerns. The, the first one is I'm hesitant to vote for anything I haven't read. And I don't think that even if we took a moment for us to all read what's in our mailboxes now, um, a, under the pressure, I'm not sure I would consider that a, a, a thorough reading, at least not the way um, my, my mind works. Um, so I will not be voting to endorse this motion as a body. Um, sometimes think longer than things take longer than um, uh, we thought. And so maybe there will be an opportunity for us to do that when we're prepared to do it, but I'm not gonna vote for it tonight. Vote. All those in favor of signing as a body to the 350.org petition to ban fracking in Boulder County, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. 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 Motion passes four to two with council members water Council Member Martin dissenting with Count, uh, with Mayor Bagley absent. Jean. All right, I move adjournment. Second. Second. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.